Episode 572, What They Deserve. Janet had never expected Andrea to sell her out so quickly. I suppose I have no reason to assume that she would be loyal to me, she thought. Still, she's a fool if she thinks I'll forget this. After the press conference ended, Janet received a call from her agency, telling her that they would not be able to protect her legally. They suggested, unofficially, that she leave the country for a while to allow for a comeback at some point in the future. The public will forget about me if I do that. I'll be replaced by the next bunch of new actresses, Janet thought. I'm not going to leave the country, she told her manager. My husband still has business ties with the Miller family. We can use that to our advantage. Are you sure? Even if Kaleidoscope lets this slide, the public is going to be brutal. This is all a huge mess, her manager sighed. If Emma had miscarried, I'm pretty sure the three of you would already be in jail by now. But nothing did happen, Janet thought. I don't see why I can't just ride this out. Look, you need to leave, her manager said. But don't tell anyone I told you that. Janet rolled her eyes and ended the call, unwilling to accept defeat. Just as she was about to dial her husband's number, Claire appeared. Janet stood up and put down her phone. Even at a time like this, she refused to show any weakness in front of her stepdaughter. Emma's a good friend. Do you want me to speak to her for you? Claire asked. Please, Janet sneered. You don't have to pretend that you're not enjoying this. You should focus on your own problems. Isn't the old man leaving today? You're not going to have his protection much longer. He already left, Claire stated. You got what you wanted. Janet glowered at the woman, trying to determine if she was telling the truth. She then headed for Jasper's bedroom to confirm his departure. After seeing that his belongings were indeed gone, she went back to the living room. Seeing as he's no longer here for you to hide behind, it's a wonder that you're daring to talk to me like this. What makes you so cocky? She asked. Claire shrugged. I'm waiting for my father to come home, she said. Janet believed that her stepdaughter had simply accepted her fate and had given up fighting. She had no idea how things were about to play out. The two women didn't bother arguing anymore. They both just sat down and waited. Janet decided to call her husband to ask where he was and inform him that his father had already gone. Really? Edward responded, his mood lifting. He clearly hasn't seen the news yet, Claire thought as a smile crept across her lips. What time will you be back? Janet asked. I'm not sure yet. As soon as I can, Edward replied. Satisfied with his answer, Janet managed to look even more smug. She was clearly enjoying the idea of making someone else's day just as bad as hers. Meanwhile, Claire didn't say a word. 
I can't rely on my father, she thought. But Peter and my lawyers have got my back. Headline after headline appeared online about the contents of Margot's press conference. Kaleidoscope reveals shocking inside story. Foul play responsible for Emma's exile. One read. Shocking plot exposed. Emma nearly tricked by scheming sister and corrupt surgeon. Another announced. Meanwhile, other news sites chose to focus on the awards angle of the whole situation, which also interested Eric. As Emma napped next to him on the sofa, he listened to Luke tell him the latest news. I've been hearing that they've changed some of the judges. That means Emma can still be nominated, Eric replied. The awards committee had recently decided to announce that her name would be officially removed from the nomination list. However, they were now reconsidering. After the press conference, they knew that if they eliminated Emma from the running, they would be swamped by complaints from the public. What shall we do about Andrea and the other two? Luke asked. Have you found Jenna yet? Eric asked. Not yet, but it won't be hard, Luke said. She doesn't exactly have a reputation for keeping a low profile. Good, Eric said with a nod. We can let the police deal with Andrea. That's what she really deserves. Luke thought about Andrea and the possibility of her going to jail. Her husband, with his mob background, may not be too happy about her being in jail, he thought. He certainly won't sit back and let her reveal his secrets to the cops. I wonder if he'll try to make her disappear. I guess that depends on how ruthless he really is. She's getting what she deserves, Eric said almost as if he was reading his assistant's mind. Nobody should do what she did and get away with it. Soon enough, Janet and Jenna will be quaking in their boots too, he thought. Episode 573 I'm Not Backing Down Later that evening, Edward finally returned home and walked into the living room where Claire and Janet were waiting. He was delighted to find that his father had finally left the house. After putting down his laptop, and removing his suit jacket, he ignored his daughter and embraced his wife, wrapping his arms around her and kissing her as if no one else was in the room. We're not exactly alone, are we? Janet said with a coy smirk as she pulled away. In reality, she couldn't care less about her stepdaughter's presence, but she wanted to remind her husband that she needed to be dealt with. Claire looked at them and rolled her eyes. I can't believe that I didn't stand up for myself sooner, she thought. That woman is pathetic. We need to talk. 
she finally said. Assuming that she was about to apologize for her behavior, Edward sat next to Janet and put his arm around her shoulder. Are you finally going to say that you're sorry? He asked, but Claire remained silent. No matter how much your grandfather dotes on you, he's an old man now, Edward said. He won't be able to protect you forever. It was stupid of you to drive a wedge between the two of us. And if I can't count on your loyalty, then it's about time Janet and I focused on creating a successor for the company. You think it's the right time? His wife asked. We've discussed it before. With everything that's going on, now would be the perfect time for you to take a step back from acting. Edward squeezed Janet's shoulder. Besides, I need someone to leave the business to. What about Claire? Janet responded. She's already had enough from me, Edward said. Right now, she's conspiring with outsiders to pocket some of the family's assets. I don't reward traitors, which is why I've decided to make her leave. He wants to kick me out, Claire thought. That's new. He always wanted to make sure I stayed right here before. Who's he gonna bully if I'm not around? We both want you out, Janet said, looking to her husband for support. You have brought this on yourself, Edward exclaimed. As soon as you decided to pit my own father against me, you should have known that this day would come. Let's see how you fend for yourself now. Claire stared coldly at her father and realized how truly hideous he looked when he was angry. Naturally, she was still afraid of him, but something inside her had changed. I'm not backing down, she thought. Much to Edward and Janet's surprise, Claire laughed. I have no intention of leaving any time soon. Not when you still owe me. Owe you? For what? He spat back. What amuses me so much is that you're desperate to have another child when the pair of you wouldn't be capable of looking after a dog, Claire said. She shook her head and then fixed her gaze on her father again. There isn't a curse word under the sun that I didn't think of calling you every time you screamed in my face and beat me. Sometimes I even used to pray that you'd get hit by a car. I trusted you to act like my father, but you behaved like a monster. You're finally telling me what you really think, Edward said, almost admiring the fact that she finally had the guts to stand up to him. But you know that everything I did to you was your own fault. If you'd been more obedient, I wouldn't have had to punish you so much. You know, I pity any child that the two of you might have. That's if that ever happens, Blair said, refusing to let her father goad her. She stopped to enjoy the look of confusion that was spreading across her father's face. You do realize that Janet is younger than I am, right? When she gets bored of sleeping next to an old man, what do you think is going to happen? Shut up! Her stepmother snapped at her. If she had any intention of having a child with you, 
It would have happened by now. Why would a young, beautiful actress want to tie herself to an old man for the rest of her life when there are younger, richer guys out there? Claire laughed. I would be really surprised if she's not already seeing someone else behind your back. Don't listen to her, Janet said, turning to Edward as a wave of guilt hit her. Edward's entire body stiffened. Swear to me that you're not seeing anyone else, he said. Janet opened her mouth to speak, but... Nothing came out. Instead of pressing her for an answer, Edward turned to his daughter and shouted, Leave! I want you out of this house right now! Claire defiantly shook her head. I told you, I'm not going anywhere. Do you really think your shares are worth anything edward responded if i wanted to i could give janet 10 percent of my shares right now claire ignored her father and called for the housekeeper to bring the luggage out thinking that his daughter had decided to give in to his request Edward was dumbfounded when he saw his own suitcases being wheeled into the living room. I've already helped you pack, Claire said, while pointing to his things. Now it's time for you to leave. Wheat Revenge have you gone crazy? Claire's father asked her. I'm in charge here. I told you to leave. And you had no right to do that, she responded. Edward let go of Janet and got up to loom over his daughter. Whether you act like it or not, I'm your father and I've given you everything you own edward pointed at her to emphasize his point that includes your right to live here look you can see that your father is angry and you know how that usually ends janet cut in it's a good idea to move out for a while and then see if he'll allow you to come back when he's calm I'm not going anywhere, Claire said again. Janet threw up her hands in frustration. Let's not waste any more time on her. Just get the housekeeper to throw her things out, she exclaimed. Edward glanced at Claire and then turned to the housekeeper and said, Get rid of her. The housekeeper looked from Janet to Claire and then shook her head. I'm sorry, Mr. Baines, but I'm afraid I can't do that, she said. Edward suddenly came to a realization. Did my father give you instructions before he left? He asked. For God's sake, just throw her things outside, Janet yelled. Ignoring her pleas, the housekeeper walked over to the luggage and started dragging the suitcases toward the door. In desperation, Janet ran over and blocked her path. Don't you know who owns this house? She asked. She clearly does, Claire said. That's why she knows who to listen to. What are you talking about? Edward asked. Claire pulled out a number of documents from a drawer and handed them to her father and said, See for yourself who owns this place. Edward snatched them out of her hands and quickly flipped through them. This is 
impossible, he said. Your father personally signed these papers in front of his lawyer, Claire said, crossing her arms. After everything you did to me over the years, you probably never expected I would retaliate. But like me, Granddad didn't want to see everything our family has built up over the years fall into the hands of that gold digger. So he changed the ownership of the house to my name. Is this for real? Janet asked, grabbing the papers from her husband's hand and looking them over. Is Jasper senile? Why would he do this? Perhaps because he couldn't bear to see his granddaughter being abused by the two of you anymore, Claire stated, and then looked over to the housekeeper. Please, throw their stuff out of the house. Edward took the deeds back from Janet and tore them up. There's no way these documents are real, he spat. All you've done is tear up a copy, Claire said. Granddad has the original, and I can assure you that it's legally binding. The veins in Edward's neck began to bulge as he attempted to hold back his fury. There's one more thing. The company hasn't been doing as well as expected for months now, so... I've decided to dismiss you as CEO. Whether you keep your position on the board will depend on how generous I feel. Claire enjoyed watching her father's eyes began to bulge. Granddad has combined his shares with mine and my mother's and placed them all in my name, which makes me the majority shareholder in Bames International. This can't be happening, Edward whispered, shaking his head. If you're wondering if there's anything else, what Janet did to Emma was enough of a reason to kick you out all by itself. It's not as if anybody will believe that you didn't know what she was up to, his daughter stated. But I do didn't know what she was up to, Edward responded. Even if people do believe that, who would want a fool in charge of their company? Your precious Janet has sealed your fate, Dad. Claire looked at her stepmother and glared. Let's see if she sticks around now that you've got nothing left. Has she really taken everything from me? Edward thought in desperation. He called his assistant to verify the situation. What the hell has gone on during the last couple of days? He shouted down the line. Because of what happened with your wife, both Miller Corp and Kaleidoscope have been putting pressure on us to take responsibility. His assistant said, The entire board of directors and the chairman have decided to resolve the issue by dismissing you. Everything was fine when I left work today, Edward yelled. I tried to call you after that, but the call went straight to voicemail. The assistant replied. Edward threw the phone on the floor in fury and stared at his daughter. What's wrong? Janet asked, running over to grab her husband's hand. Edward brushed her arm away and said, Get your damn hands off me! What did I do? His wife asked, stunned at the change in her husband's tone towards her. This is all because of you, Edward spat at Janet. 
If you hadn't decided to cause trouble with Emma Miller, none of this would have happened. Losing his temper, he swung his arm and backhanded Janet across the face, knocking her to the floor. As much as Claire enjoyed the fact that her father and stepmother had now turned on each other, she wasn't going to tolerate his violence towards her or anyone else anymore. There will be no more violence in this house. If you raise your hand to anyone in this house ever again, I'll have the cops take you away. Claire warned. Clearly relieved, Janet got to her feet and asked her husband, Why would you do that to me? I told you not to pick a fight with Emma. Claire cut in. But you wouldn't listen. Even if she might be a pushover, her husband certainly isn't. Did you really think he would let you off the hook after scheming against his wife? Once you leave here, you lose your last layer of protection. Just wait and see what Kaleidoscope and Eric will do to you. I'm sure Emma has plans for you too. Episode 575 Leave It With Me Janet felt a wave of nausea hit her as she realized that what her stepdaughter was saying was true. Emma's a fighter too, Claire continued. One who never loses. In the past, Janet had acted without fear of reprisal as she had her powerful husband backing her. That meant she was prepared to use any underhanded tactics she could to get where she wanted to be within the acting industry. Now that her own reputation was in tatters and Edward could no longer shield her, she would be forced to face Miller Corp, Kaleidoscope, and Eric Roberts on her own. I can't let this happen, she thought, once again seeking out her husband's arm. I know that I was wrong, but... Janet's sentence was interrupted by Edward shoving her away. Sensing that her father's mood was taking an even darker turn, Claire turned to the housekeeper and said, You should leave. Her words had a hidden meaning, though. Get Peter, she thought. Get him now. The housekeeper nodded her head and quickly left, while Edward approached his daughter and gripped her by the shoulders. Call your grandfather right now and tell him to give me back my house and my shares. He barked. He can't return something that never belonged to you in the first place. The house and the shares were mine and my mother's, she responded. Why don't you ask your wife to support you for a change? As your father... I am commanding you to reinstate me as CEO, Edward yelled. Claire saw anger flash across her father's face. In the past, she would have been terrified of him, but not anymore. Do your worst, she thought, holding his gaze. We might share some of the same DNA, but you're not my father, Claire said, enjoying the look of surprise on his face as her words landed. Real fathers, real men, don't abuse their children. You've given me no reason to respect you 
or follow your wishes. I'm done with that. You'll do as I say, Edward replied. No, you'll do as I say. I can make you beg for mercy like you made me. I can even see to it that you'll die alone like my mother did. I let you get away with so much in the past, but that's not going to happen anymore. You're finished. Claire took a deep breath, feeling as if a massive weight had been lifted from her shoulders. Take your wife and get the hell out of my life. Incensed, Edward lunged forward, wrapped his hands around his daughter's throat, and began to squeeze. Give me back control of my company, or you won't be leaving here alive, he said, squeezing harder. Just as Claire's vision was starting to blur, she caught sight of Peter coming through the front rushing towards her. Thankfully, he had been waiting nearby with some bodyguards, and the housekeeper had known where to find them. Furious at what Edward was doing, Peter threw a well-placed punch into the older man's back, forcing him to let go of his daughter. As the bodyguards restrained Edward, Peter threw his arms around Claire and hugged her tightly. Are you okay? He asked. Claire nodded and began to sob. He needs to be dealt with, she replied. I know, Peter said. Leave it to me.